As innovative as his designs had been to date, Browning was about to go a step further. His genius would revolutionize gun design forever and bring about a permanent break with Winchester. In 1900, John M. Browning once again cracked a puzzle that had everyone else baffled. How to make a shotgun automatic. Nobody had ever done this before. And the biggest problem was the, the variation in the, in the shells. Uh, you could buy a box of shells from Winchester, 12 gauge, buy another box of, of shells from Remington, and there'd be quite a big variation in, as to the power. What he had to have was a shotgun that would so would function with any shells that were put into it. So what he developed was a friction ring, which more or less regulated how much friction went back, regardless of how much you get an equal amount of force going back in his lock mechanism. Browning called his revolutionary shotgun the Auto 5. It was recoil operated with a five-shot magazine. It was nicknamed the Humpback because of its squared-off receiver. It works on what we call the long recoil principle, in that uh, when you pull the trigger and fire it, the barrel recoils a considerable distance. And it then runs forward again and strips the cartridge case out. And then the bolt closes, or the breech closes, and loads a new cartridge. Now, it sounds a very cumbersome mechanism, but when Browning got his hands on it, it ceased to be cumbersome and he made a very, very neat job of what could be a very awkward thing. I always maintain if that gun was brought out today, everyone who has an automatic shotgun would sell their automatic shotgun and buy one of those because they're incredibly efficient and they were just beautifully made. As usual, Browning offered his new Auto 5 prototype to Winchester. Winchester, until this time, had uh, bought 44 guns that Browning had invented, of which they had only manufactured 10. Now, some of the models were just modifications of what he was doing, but other guns were guns that they would buy to keep off the market. And so Mr. Browning didn't want this gun because he felt so strongly that it was going to be a big seller. He didn't want this gun to be purchased by Winchester and stuck on a shelf. Browning asked for new financial terms, royalties rather than Winchester's usual lump sum payment. The company's president, T.G. Bennett, refused. John Browning's relationship with the Winchester company was over. Browning took the Auto 5 to another manufacturer, Remington. But only moments before a scheduled appointment, Remington's president, Marcellus Hartley, fell dead of a heart attack. This unexpected event forced John Browning down an equally unexpected path. He didn't want to risk being beaten to the market, so he took the Auto 5 overseas to Liège, Belgium, and made a deal with one of Europe's leading gun companies, Fabrique Nationale, FN for short. For centuries, Liège had been a firearm mecca, but recent times had seen business fall off. Over the next two decades, Browning would revitalize FN, and the fortunes of the entire region. They called him the master. John Browning began spending months at a time in Liège. He even learned to speak French by laboriously looking up every new word. But it wasn't only the instantly popular Auto 5 that kept him so busy. It was a radically different line of products, automatic pistols. <laughs> 